Hi everyone, welcome to this practice problem walkthrough by physacademy.com. In this problem, we'll combine Coulomb's and Newton's second laws. Let's start reading and analyzing the problem statement together. Two ping pong balls filled with air are tied to a very light with a length half a meter long string. The loose ends of the strings are taped to the same position on a horizontal ceiling. When both are equally rubbed with the same material, they develop a static charge and repel each other, making an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the vertical. Part A. With this experiment alone, can you tell what type of charge is on the balloon? Part B. Is this a stable or unstable equilibrium? Part C. Estimate the number of excess charges on each balloon. Clearly state any assumptions made in your estimation. In part A, we are asked to guess what the charge type on each ball is. With all of the provided information, we know these two balls are repelling each other, therefore, they have the same electric charge. Both can be positively or negatively charged, therefore, we cannot confidently say what the type of charge is, but we can surely say they are the same. To check what type of equilibrium we have, try to push the object and see what happens to them. If they return to where they already were, it means they prefer the original state, which is a stable equilibrium. But if, after disturbing the system, it doesn't return to the original condition and prefers some other energy state, for example, pushing a ball on the top of a hill, it is an unstable equilibrium point. In this case, if we disturb the balls by pushing or pulling them, they will return to their original state again, which means this is a stable equilibrium. In part C, we are asked to find the number of charges on each ball. To calculate the number of charges, first we need to find the actual electric charge on each of the balls in Coulomb's. My first guess is that we will use Coulomb's forces equation, so let's start with sketching the free body diagram of each of these balls. We have two FBD plots because we have two balls, one plot for each ball. Since both cases are two-dimensional, we need to separate the forces along the X and Y axis for each of the FBDs. Assuming you had enough practice in the forces chapter, I'm going to fast forward and write all of Newton's second law equations in one table. All right, now that we can see how other forces like gravity and tension are related to Coulomb's force, let's focus on this force alone to see what we know and don't know about its variables. Starting with the original Coulomb's equation, we know that both charges are the same type and have the same magnitude, so instead of Q1 and Q2, we can call them Q. Remember, Q, or the charge of the balls, is the variable we want to find. To calculate the distance between two charges, we can see that the strings form an equilateral triangle by checking the system. So without further calculation, we know that the distance between the charges is the same as L, the length of the strings, or half a meter. After marking the knowns and unknowns of the equation, other than Q, or the final ultimate unknown, Fe or electric force also is unknown. We go back to Newton's second law equations to calculate Fe. After calculating Fe, we can plug it into this equation to find Q. Let's start with Newton's second law equation of ball 2 along the x-axis. We already know the left-hand side, Fe from our previous calculation is K times Q squared divided by L squared. On the right-hand side, we can replace F tension with F gravity divided by cosine theta from Newton's second law equation of ball 1 along the y-axis. Sine theta divided by cosine theta is tangent of theta. All right, let's see how we are doing up to here. K is known. L is half a meter and known. Q is our ultimate unknown. M is the mass of a ping pong ball, which is 3 grams. G is 9.8 meters per second square. And theta is 30 degrees. Perfect. So other than Q, everything else is known. Let's rearrange this equation and find the numerical value of Q. 
After plugging in the known values, we get 6.876 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs. But remember, we are asked to find the number of charges. To find the total number of the charges, we divide this total amount of charge by the charge of a single electron or proton, which is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19. So the final answer is a huge number. It is not surprising, we were kind of expecting a large number of charges. As an extra fact, to see how large one coulomb of charge is, from Wikipedia, the charge of negative lightning is about 15 coulombs. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please check our website, physacademy.com, or our YouTube channel for more practice problems. If you found it helpful, to support our work, please consider subscribing to our channel.